our clocks moved forward last night. We haven't changed the relationship between the light and the dark. It stays the same. But our lives are now organised a little differently in relation to the rising and setting of the sun. When the Jewish rabbi Nicodemus came to see Jesus at night, in answer to his questions, Jesus made a deeper connection between light and life. A philosopher met Jesus once. A lover of wisdom. A professor of divinity, respected in the highest circles. And Jesus spoke to him in the same way he spoke to anybody, using a clear everyday image to explore deep spiritual reality. He came at night, down the shady side of the street, hoping to speak to Jesus. Do you want to be Jesus? Me? Well, yeah. You know how you explained the gospel, so... <laughs> okay. I feel I must make my apology, visiting you so late to discuss theology. Well, you don't want to be seen with me. Your reputation. Guilty as charged. But first, let me say, these things that you teach and the truth they convey have struck me profoundly. Though many consider you odd, it's clear to me these remarkable, shall we call them, events, could only occur through one sent by God. Eruditio et religio, scholarship and duty, bid me ask, why? Why are you here? Because the cycle's the same, year after year. Men and women struggling with pride and pain for dominion. But God's aim is to bring in his kingdom. His kingdom? Not of this world. His rule in your heart. You teach about God, about what he has planned, and yet it's clear you don't understand. Yet. The door to the kingdom is opened by starting again. By being reborn. You've lost me. I hope not. Think of it like a spiritual birth. Born into a new life that continues forever. This is God's plan. His love without limit. To save the whole earth and each soul that is in it from death and destruction by giving light through his son. And you are God's son. That's a question for you. But listen to this. Whoever believes in him will not die. I promise, not one. You promise. <laughs> Here's the choice. A wise person knows the world is both light and darkness. God's light, human darkness. Hmm. People choose darkness to hide their evil thoughts and deeds. They're afraid of being exposed to the light. They prefer if you like, to live in the dark. No spark at the deep of the ocean. But if they swim to the surface and live in the light, connect with the truth, then their deeds can be seen as God's kingdom within them. The light comes to save. Not condemn them. So why do people hate the light? Why? It's a bit ironic that Nicodemus comes looking for the light under cover of darkness. He hid because he was scared. We can fear that light will condemn us for bad stuff. Light doesn't ever condemn. We do that for ourselves. The true light always welcomes and embraces us. Love like that kind of breaks us. But it remakes us too. That's what it is to be born again, with love and light to spare and to share. Nicodemus was looking and he found Jesus. Light, love, truth, purity and self-sacrifice. We know hundreds of thousands of people are volunteering to support the NHS and countless medics and key workers 
have put their health and possibly their lives on the line for you and me. They are light in our darkness. We can't all go out and deliver stuff or drive buses, but we can all share the light we know. We have fantastic technology to help us spend time with people who are isolated or lonely or scared. And even from a phone, we can welcome and embrace. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. Be light.